Let's take a look at Andy Goldsworthy. He's considered an environmental artist and a popular one at that. He's a contemporary artist and was born in 1956. He's a British sculptor and photographer and is considered an environmentalist who produces sculptures specifically designed around unique sites in natural and urban settings. He lives and works in Scotland. So what is land art? Well, land art is known as earth art, environmental art, eco art, earthworks, and it's an art movement that emerged in the 60s and 70s. It's usually associated with Great Britain and the United States. In this type of artwork, these pieces interact directly with the landscape. In fact, the land is even used as a part of the sculpture. So how can I make land art? First, you want to find common items in your environment. You could focus on natural settings, but you can also use any found material or object, even from inside your homes. So you're just thinking of common materials. You want to collect a variety of these pieces to build with. For unity, your objects should be fairly similar. To show variety, you may want to pick different styles, different colors, different sizes. Then you'll want to brainstorm and experiment with the placement of your objects. Where will you put this? What kind of setting will this be in? And how will you place this or arrange it? With this type of art, it's ephemeral. It's temporal. It has to do with time. And therefore, sometimes it's temporary. So then what's the point of creating temporary art? Well, sometimes the beauty of art is in the creation, not the final presentation. Check out this quote from Andy Goldsworthy himself. He says, When I make something in a field, street, or altering landscape, it may vanish, but it's part of the history of those places, he says in an interview. In the early days, my work was about collapse and decay. Now, some of the changes that occur are too beautiful to be described as simply decay. At Folkestone, one of the places he shows his artwork, I got up early one morning ahead of an incoming tide and covered a boulder in poppy petals. It was calm and the sea slowly and gently washed away the petals, stripping the boulder and creating splashes of red in the sea. The harbor from which many troops left for war was in the background. In this quote, he's describing the importance of history on that exact place where he was creating his art. In this case, it was a history of war. Our mission is to create our own original artworks using inspiration from this concept of eco art, environmental art, and found object art. So your objective is to create a sculpture using items from your environment, and you should be pulling in some inspiration from Andy Goldsworthy. Students should use repetition by collecting several items that are unified or relatively similar. Students will creatively assemble their items thinking of balance or movement in the placement of their designs. Students may build a temporary sculpture and therefore wouldn't need glue or other adhesives. Here are some great student examples of temporary artwork that would definitely work for this project. In this case, they've used objects from nature and created some really fabulous examples. You can see these artists just utilized what they had available. In this case, the artists had access to rocks, leaves, even pine cones or sticks. These are all great options. Now, the part that makes them temporary is the fact that they're outside. If these were in my backyard, my dogs would definitely destroy them within a matter of minutes. They'd be picking up the sticks and running around the yard with them, and well, therefore, it just wouldn't be permanent. These would certainly be impacted by the elements. While you're creating your artworks, you'll wanna consider movement. This element of design is used to create the path in which the viewer's eye moves throughout the piece. And often it has to do with some sort of focal point that the artist wants to draw you to. It can be a great option to include this element in your piece. Balance is another great option. You wanna consider should your work be symmetrical 
Or do you want to make it asymmetrical? Pattern is another great idea. It has to do with how you organize or unify your piece. It's not required, but you might want to consider, do you want alternating colors? Do you want to form some kind of pattern? In terms of the objects you could choose to use, you might decide to take advantage of natural materials. So this would refer to anything that you could typically find outside. Rocks, leaves, flowers, anything you can get your hands on from nature could be a great option for materials. Man-made found objects would also be a great choice and another option available to you for this project. So you could choose to take advantage of common everyday items. Rummage through your junk drawer, see what you have access to. Just remember if you're using household items, you want to make sure you have permission to use those items. You'll want to store your artwork safely. So you'll be submitting your work by the end of next class. If you've made a temporary artwork, you'll want to make sure you take a picture of it, especially if it's something that you made outside. The elements could potentially damage your art piece between now and the time you go to submit your work. So get a picture to be safe. So now it's time to create your own environmental art using found objects or materials from nature. I'm estimating that you'll need about an hour and a half to complete a quality piece of art for this assignment. That may mean that we spill over into multiple class periods, but you'll definitely want to start now. I really look forward to seeing what you create.